Good morning, options traders. Welcome, everyone. And in the last video, I talked about an options elasticity. And I said in the next video, I would show you how to use that concept to do what's called beta weighting your portfolio. You can also do this with a stock portfolio or an options portfolio or a combination. Because most of you are options traders, I'm going to start by showing you how to beta weight your options portfolio. Keep in mind, most of your broker's platforms will do this for you automatically, but it helps to understand what it's doing and why it works, but also for those times that you might not have a broker that does this, let me show you how you can do it on your own. So let's take a look at what beta weighting is and how you can beta weight your options portfolio. So remember in the last video, I talked about an options elasticity, and I said it measures by how much your options price will move in percentage terms for a 1% change in the stock's price. Well, that's probably the most important ingredient, the most difficult calculation when you are using beta weighting. And that's why a lot of people get tripped up when it comes to beta weighting because they don't understand elasticity. So if you didn't see that video, you'll wanna check that one out first. So once you understand elasticity, what in the world is beta? Well, beta is also a mathematical calculation, but it shows how sensitive a stock's price is to changes in the S&P 500 index, or the SPX. Now, by definition, the SPX always has a beta of 1.0. It never changes. That's just the benchmark. So if a particular stock's beta is greater than 1.0, like 1.1, 1.5, something bigger, it's more volatile than the S&P 500 index. And conversely, if the beta is less than 1.0, it's less volatile. So your broker's platforms will usually show you beta. If not, you can look it up on finance.yahoo.com. Lots of places on the web that will show you a stock's beta. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say that you've got shares of ABC and you find out it has a beta of 1.5. You also have shares of XYZ and it has a beta of 0.8. What does that mean? Well, it means that if the S&P 500 is up, let's say 10%, perhaps at the end of the year, you'd expect ABC to be up 1.5 times 10% or 15%. And of course, if the index is down 10%, you'd think that your stock would be down about 15%. Now, none of that is etched in stone. It's just saying that after long periods of history, that this stock typically moves at a rate about 1.5 times that of the S&P 500. So it's more of a long-term pattern. So don't think that it absolutely has to work out this way. Conversely, with a beta of 0.8, your XYZ is expected to be up 0.8 times 10% or about 8%. So again, because its beta is less than one, it's not going to quite match the movements of the S&P 500, whether up or down. So the key point to understand here is that beta is just a mathematical connection between stocks and the S&P 500 index. All right, so why would we use this? Well, traders with many different stocks and or options may wish to hedge against risk. So they might wanna buy, let's say, put options to ensure the entire portfolio or just a portion. So there's a couple ways you could go about it. One, you could buy put options on many different tickers. You'd have to go through each stock in your portfolio, buy put options on each ticker. But of course, that's going to get expensive. There are lots of different commissions and bid-ask spreads. So it's not real efficient. It would be easier to figure out how your entire portfolio behaves in terms of the S&P 500. And then we can just make one big swoop of a put option purchase on the S&P 500 that basically matches your portfolio. And that is what beta weighting is all about. So by purchasing only SPX puts, you can ensure the entire portfolio much easier, much cheaper, and much more efficient. That's why traders want to understand beta weighting. Before I show you how to do it, a lot of times people say, this still looks confusing. So let me give you a little bit of a, an analogy here of what's happening. Let's say you go on a little trip here and you buy something for 10,000 Japanese yen. And then you're in London, you buy something for 5,000 British pounds, 
and then you buy something for 3,000 euros, and then you buy something for 1,000 Canadian dollars. Well, if you wanted to insure each of these items, you would need to buy insurance in terms of yen. Then you'd need a separate policy in terms of British pounds. You'd have to go through each one. It's time consuming. It's expensive. What else could you do? You could convert all of these to a currency, standardize them. So let's say that all four of these items translate to 10,000 US dollars. Much easier now. Now we just need one insurance policy to cover 10,000 US dollars. Will it work out perfectly? No, it won't. But it's going to get you close and it's much easier to do. So that's really all we're trying to do when we beta weight a portfolio. There's just a lot more calculations. So let's go over to an Excel spreadsheet and see how to beta weight an options portfolio. So here we are in a hypothetical options portfolio. And let's just say that we have three different contracts. For the first one, the underlying stock is trading for 50. It has a delta of a half. The option's trading for $5 and we're holding 20 contracts. The first calculation we need to do is to find out the total dollar value that we're holding. So right here, you can see that the formula is telling you to take the options price times the number of contracts times 100. So we're holding $10,000 in this first option. We do that for each row through here. And when we add them up, we've got $35,000 sitting in these three contracts. The next calculation is to find out the percent of the portfolio. Again, pretty straightforward. If this is $10,000 here of the $35,000, it represents 28.6% or about 29%. So we just take each dollar value divided by 35,000, and that gives us the percent of the portfolio. Next, we need to input the stock's beta. And again, you can find this on your broker's platform, finance.yahoo.com, a number of different sites on the web. So we just plug in those stock betas. The next column, we find the elasticity. This is what I talked about in the previous video. So you can see, if you click right here, the formula is telling you to take the stock price times the delta, and then dividing by the options price. So this first option here has an elasticity of five, second one of six, and the third one of seven. The final calculation we need for right now is to find the beta weight or the beta of this weighted by the percent of the portfolio. That's what it means to beta weight it. So this calculation is saying 28.6% of the portfolio times a beta of 1.5 times an elasticity of five. So in other words, yes, we have a beta of 1.5, but it's also juiced up by another factor of five because of our elasticity. But because it's only being controlled by 29% of the portfolio, we have to multiply that. That's what it means to weight it. And so right now we have a beta weight of 2.14 for this first position. Second one is 0.77, and the third one is 4.8. So why is this third one so high? Well, a number of reasons. First, it has a very high elasticity of 7. Also has a fairly high beta of 1.2, but probably more importantly, it's controlling 57% of that portfolio. So this is another risk measure to take a look at. It'll help you to see where most of the risk is lying in your portfolio. So once we have these beta weights, we add them up and I get 7.71. What does this mean? It means that this portfolio of three options is 7.71 times or about eight times more volatile than the S&P 500. So if the index drops 1%, we're going to fall almost 8%. So let's see if it works. Let's come down here, and in the first example, I'm going to use SPY, which is a 1 tenth index, but it's still the S&P 500, trading at about 270. I'll do an example here in a moment of the SPX. So a 1% change would be about 2.7 points on the S&P 500. So what does this mean for us? Well, the first thing we have to understand is how many shares am I controlling of the S&P 500 mathematically. This is where our beta weight comes in. The first thing is to say, if I had $35,000 and I bought the SPY ETF trading at 270 per share, I could purchase 129.63 or about 130 shares of the SPY. Does this mean that my portfolio behaves 
like 130 shares. Not at all, because I've got a beta of almost eight. So to find out how this portfolio of three options is going to behave, I need to multiply this 130 figure times 7.71, and it gives me a beta equivalent of 1,000 shares. So now this is my beta weighted share equivalent. Even though I'm not holding any SPY shares, I am mathematically controlling the equivalent of 1,000 shares. So if I want to insure this portfolio or hedge it somehow, I need to pretend that it's behaving like 1,000 shares of SPY. I would need 10 put options. Now, of course, that's at expiration it would fully hedge me. If I'm buying at the money options with a delta of minus 0.5, I would need 20 contracts. So it also depends on what you're trying to do. But most traders are looking for an expiration hedge. So if this portfolio is behaving like a thousand shares, I could buy 10 SPY puts and fully hedge this portfolio. Now let's come up over here and see if it works. This little section over here is just a mathematical check. So for example, let's say that the S&P 500 drops 1%. The expected stock loss would be 75 cents on this first stock. How are we coming up with that? Well, take a look at the calculation. It says to take your stock's price times the change in the index times the stock's beta of 1.5. So if the index falls 1%, I would expect this stock to lose about 75 cents. And I do that for each row. Next, I need to figure out the option loss. If this stock loses 75 cents, my option is not going to lose 75 cents unless it's a delta one option. But because this first one has a delta of a half, I'm only going to lose half that amount or 38 cents. Now it would technically be 37 and a half cents, but I've got these rounded just to two decimal places. So the reason we're coming up with 38 cents is because my options delta is one half and I'm therefore going to lose half this amount. For the second one, the stock is expected to fall 90 cents, but because the options delta is 60, I'm going to lose 54 cents. That would be my expected loss. And I do that for each option. What is the total option value? Well, if I lose 38 cents on 20 contracts, I'm losing $750. So this column right here is saying just to take the option loss times the number of contracts times 100. And that's this formula right here. So I would expect to lose about $750. For the second one, I would lose about $270. And the third one, $1680. I add those up, I would expect to lose $2,700. So how big is a $2,700 loss compared to my starting value of $35,000? 7.71% loss. Exactly 7.71 times the loss in the index. What if I made the index fall 2%? Let's change this to 2%. And you'll see that the beta does not change, but my options loss would be 2% times almost 8 or almost 16%. So this just shows that my beta calculation is correct. So let's go back to 0.01. Now, what if we use the SPX? That was trading at about 2,700. And you'll see that the beta equivalent is now 100 shares. So I would just need one put option if I was using SPX put options. But I made this work out to a nice even number of 100 in the real world. That's rarely going to work out that way. So if you get 180 shares, you'd either need to buy two put options and be a little over hedged because you're buying insurance on 200 shares when you're only controlling 180. Or you could buy one put option and you'd be quite a bit under hedged. So again, this is why most traders will use the SPY because they allow you to fine tune it and get a better fit for real world applications. But hopefully this will help you to understand what beta weighting is, why it's important and how to do it. And if nothing else, if your broker's platform gives it to you, it will at least give you an appreciation for the amount of work that goes into the calculation. For those who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.